Maharba, welcome to Bahrain to Touchdown Middle East 2023. I'm now joined by Hani Aska, Chief Global Business Officer at Telco. And Hani, thank you so much for talking to me and uh, thank you for welcoming me to Bahrain. It's my first time in the country, in the region as well. <laughs> thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you here in Bahrain. Happy to see the crowd also in Bahrain. Yeah, no, it's been a fantastic two days. Um, and for a first year edition, it's been quite uh, extraordinary to learn about the region um, and see the people that are here. I think, I think there's a lot of uh, hunger for development and innovation. Uh, which, speaking of which, I mean, you've been doing quite a lot in the digital infrastructure space yourself. So, can you start by just painting a picture of where Batilco stands within the digital infrastructure space? Uh, what's it done in Bahrain? How did, how, what's the impact of that across the Gulf as well? Okay, so let me start with the history. Uh, talking about uh, Batilco had uh, been the incumbent in Bahrain for, for a long time, up until today. We've hosted uh, four, three of the landing stations, three out of the four landing stations in Bahrain for the cable connectivity. So uh, that was our uh, initial investments. We've built data centers since long ago. It was called an Infort. Today it's Betelco data center. We've got three data centers uh, in Manama, in, in Hamala, and in Askar. They're all interconnected. Other than that, we have invested a lot in the infrastructure, like the fiber infrastructure in the kingdom, the 5G, the mobile network. So, Betelco has contributed a lot mm. into uh, the infrastructure, digital mm. infrastructure of Bahrain. Mm. Recently, in May, we have announced uh, as Beyond um, uh, more than $250 million of investment mm. on international uh, cable, but also data centers. So that helps our digital infrastructure and the ecosystem for digital economy. The, uh, the data center is going to be located also in Asker, but it's going to be addressing the customers that we can't address today, such as AI. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a multi-megawatt data center. While the international connectivity, we have finally joined the cable an international cable that connects three continents and 14 countries. And we are uh, independent from all the uh, regional uh, uh, cables. So we can uh, set our destiny, we can set our own prices, we have the control over mm. that network. Uh, that's uh, the CMU6, uh, we've announced it. Um, last but not least, we've also announced uh, Al Khalij cable, which is a multi fiber cable system connecting Bahrain, Qatar, mm. UAE, and Oman. Mm. Okay. Just picking up on the, the new data center, the one you built now for AI customers, did you have to reshuffle the architecture, the design of the facility? Uh, are you going to be using liquid cooling? Talk us a little bit more the, the, the facility. Okay. We are at a point where an RFP is out, so mm. I would be limited in uh, <laughs> talking about... Uh, what kind of cooling systems we're yeah, using. Yeah. However, I can say that Betilco mm -hmm. is committed uh, with the clean energy. We have a solar park in the same area, so we are going to expand it. Mm. That exchange that we have, or the data center that we have in Asker, is uh, fully powered by our mm. solar uh, power. Yeah. So uh, we hope the new data center also can be catered as part of the mm. same solar power. Okay. Is the, the solar power fully used by the data center or do you envision at some point, for example, selling some of the excess to, to the grid? The whole, the whole site is now powered by mm. that solar. So it's okay. not just the data center, but also the mobile, the fixed assets that mm. we have, our internet exchange. The whole site yeah, is the whole ecosystem. Power, yes. Okay. And the excess of it obviously yeah. goes into the grid. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you've, you mentioned AI has a driver for demand. What are the segments or even more niche segments within AI are you seeing the money come from? Who, who are the clients coming from? Is it like esports, finance? We, we basically see AI, we see global customers like the ExxonMobil, like the Shells. Hmm potentially can move 
international carriers, these kind of cables build highways, so it definitely attracts traffic, and those mm -hmm. traffic needs to be hosted somewhere. Yeah. So we see a lot of uh, content providers that could, could join. Hmm. Cloud provider hyperscalers have the opportunity Regardless, being it uh, from the west or from the east, we are in discussion with uh, both regions. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, and uh, the hype in the region is growing. Mm. Mm. So we we want to take part of that growth. Mm. Okay, I think one common word that has come out of this conference is collaboration and partnerships. Um, can you talk us through what sort of collaborations and partnerships you have in place to help okay. drive forward your this infrastructure ecosystem? Um, I'm a believer of yeah. uh, partnerships. I always yeah. say doing things alone, you can do it fast, but doing things with the uh, partners, mm. you can do it far. Mm. So <clears throat> for consortiums, for cables, for the data center, we decided to go alone. Mm. Now that we went alone and we took all the budgets and we're going to start building it, we are yeah. now at a point where we start discussing partnerships. Mm. What can we do? What can we do together for both of us to grow? So definitely we are going to get into a partnership mm. on the data center, but also on the cables. Mm. We cannot be just doing it only alone. Mm -hmm. It has to be partnered. Mm. So okay. I'm a big believer of partnerships. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's the way forward to everything. And I mean, I don't think one company can handle the demand that's coming. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> it's, Agree. Uh, which is a massive opportunity as well. It's a good problem to have. Agree. Um, I mean, so the subsea cables, of course, they will land in different shores um, of the Gulf and uh, some other countries. Do you have plans to expand the data center footprint into other countries or very yes. much focus on Bahrain? Yes. Currently, we are uh, in discussion with one of the neighboring countries um, uh, to expand it. And another one we're thinking of in Jordan. Uh, we haven't thought uh, to expand other than these two at this point of time, so we thought let's yeah. manage the situation yeah. now with Bahrain, uh, Saudi and uh, Jordan. Yeah. And then we see yeah. where do we want to expand. Yeah. We might expand more than one data center in Bahrain, more than one data center in Saudi. Hmm. Yeah, so starting to do the ecosystem, but yeah, you're, you're right, get the first pillars built properly and then once that works, exactly. copy and paste to other countries around exactly. the region. Um, and then of course, I mean, we are a touchdown, obviously we mentioned, this is the first edition that this event has been here. Why is it important for a company like Patelco, and despite you being based in Bahrain, because you could be based here, not even have attended, but why was it important for Patelco to be involved with this event and what does an event like this mean to the region? Um, First, it's our commitment to make such events in Bahrain successful. Uh, number two, uh, we need to reinforce our presence that we are not just a telecom company, we are not just uh, a connectivity company. We are a full technology company mm. and that involves data centers. So there was a, a great opportunity for us to expose ourselves being a diamond sponsor. It was a great opportunity for us to also demonstrate some of the investments we're doing to the audience. Mm. And obviously it's going to go into the magazines and mm. uh, all the media channels. So we wanted to show ourselves not just in Bahrain, mm. but mm. we are beyond Bahrain. Yeah, well. yeah. Um, and then, so from attending the different sessions, from speaking to people here and there, etc., uh, what's been the one thing that you've learned that you had no clue about <laughs> in the last two days? I'm still learning about the, each market, what are the drivers, and mm. it, is, uh, it is great to see how neighboring countries, but completely the drivers are different mm. from one another, the growth drivers. So um, I'm, I'm listening uh, to all those uh, sessions, and mm. I'm uh, waiting for also the following two sessions yeah. as well. Yeah. Interesting. And then, so last question, in 12 months time we'll be back here for Touchdown 2024. What's the one thing that you expect or would like to see happen in the Gulf region in terms of digital infrastructure? Well, I'd love to see more and more collaborations between regional operators, be it mm. data center operators, be it mm. uh, mobile operators, be it all that kind of operators. Um, enabling, rather than you know each one holding a border, enabling connectivity between those data centers mm. seamlessly, so that we allow the content and traffic to come here, rather than us all trying to compete with mm. one another. 
So I hope to see Middle East and Bahrain being a big part of it become the hub mm. connecting Asia and Europe. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is geographically, strategically positioned um, to be that between Asia, Africa, Europe. It's it's the perfect location, seven hours away from everywhere. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, from the whole world. Yeah. But Hani Aska, Chief Global Business Officer, but thank you so much for talking to me. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching and do check the website and follow us on social media for the latest digital infrastructure news from across the world. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.